Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over engine management in the F86. So in the F86 you control the engine with your throttle lever here. If you push the lever forward it puts more air and gas in the engine and it spins faster and obviously your plane flies faster. And if you pull it back, obviously the opposite. So you can see um, how fast your engine is spinning with the RPM here. So if I push the throttle forward you can see the RPM is going up right now. And if I pull the throttle back, you can see the RPM goes down. There's a couple other gauges for the engine. This right here is the pressure of the oil. If you push the throttle forward, the oil pressure increases. This is the uh, fuel flow. So if I pull the throttle back, it's going to use less fuel. So obviously the fuel flow will go down. In DCS though, you don't really need to worry about oil pressure or fuel flow. The only thing you really need to watch in DCS is this one here the exhaust temperature. This is basically the temperature of the engine. So you just need to make sure it doesn't go past this red line. If it goes past the red line for a couple seconds, it's okay. But, sh but you don't want to fly with it past the red line for too long because it could cause problems. So if you see it past the red line, just bring your throttle back until it goes back into the safe zone. So the next engine control is this switch right here. Um, it's, it's above the landing gear indicator, it's this one here. So you can see it says extend, retract, and anti-ice. So if it's cold outside, you can put it to anti-ice, and it will heat the engine up to prevent icing. If you put it to extend, then it puts a filter over the engine to prevent um, debris from getting into it when you're on the ground. But whenever you take it off, you've got to put, uh, put it to retract. I'm not sure if the filter system actually is modeled in DCS. So I don't think, in DCS, I don't think it really matters where you put this switch. But if they ever do model it, that's how it works. So next I'll go over the fire detection system. So there's two lights here on the right side of the plane, this red one and this orange one. The red one will light up if there's a fire in the front of the engine. And the orange one will light up if there's a fire in the back of the engine. So you can press them to test them. You can also flip this switch up and wait a couple seconds and it'll test both of them. And then you can turn the switch off and they should turn off in a second. There you go. Unfortunately, the F-86 doesn't have any way to put out engine fires. There's no fire extinguisher. So the manual says that if there is a fire, you have to just eject. So lastly, I'll go over how to do an air restart. So if your engine cuts out in the air, what you want to do first is you want to bring your throttle back and you want to bring it all the way to the off position. So you click the end button on your keyboard. So the next thing you want to do is make sure your battery is on and your engine master switch is on. And then you want to put yourself into a dive. The reason you want to get into a dive is because you need to make sure that your speed is past this yellow line here so you can restart the engine in the air. Then you want to turn on this switch that says emergency fuel. And you want to turn on this switch here that says emergency ignition. You flip the cover up and then flip it up. Then in order to actually start the engine, you want to click the home button twice on your keyboard. So click it once and then click it again and you can see the RPM is starting to go up. So once the RPM stops moving, you should be able to move your throttle and it should increase the RPM. So you can see I restarted my engine. Once it's restarted and it's running like normal, you can go ahead and turn off the emergency fuel and you can turn off the air restart. And there you go. The last thing I'll go over is compressor stalls. So a compressor stall is basically where there is a disruption of airflow to the engine. If that happens, you'll notice that the RPM will be kind of unresponsive. So whenever you move your throttle, the RPM will not change very much. The engine also might be uh, very hot and there might be a loud banging noise. In DCS, in the F86, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure if compressor stalls are modeled or not because I've never had it in this plane. But in case you do have a compressor stall, all you need to do is pull the throttle back to idle, let the engine settle down for a couple seconds, and then slowly bring the throttle back up to normal. 
Thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you later.